You know, so we can plug in this monitor. Okay? No, yeah. Just leave, leave this shit right there. Yeah. This song is about beer guts. So I know, I know it's a couple big fat motherfuckers in here with beer guts, right? Right? Come on, what's up with the beer drinkers in the house, man? Keep it right there. This song is about a beer gut, how you can accumulate a beer gut. What happens when you get a beer gut?
hell. Hell yeah, motherfucker. Wake up, fool. Wait a minute, wait. All y'all people right here in the front, be cool. Be cool for a second. Be cool for a second, because I just want to hear the motherfuckers that's making their way up the stairs and shit. Can y'all go, hell yeah? See, thank y'all for being quiet because I can actually hear the noise from the back. Thank y'all back there. That made me feel good. All right, so be ready. Walt's gonna be the first one. He gonna say hell yeah, and then with us every time we do it, we gonna all together say. Yeah. Your head is flat, but string it out. Say, 
Close the book, but we can just get 
we gonna go into your psyche. You might as well admit that you are that lunatic because that lunatic would not be here with me if that lunatic was not happy and free being that lunatic. Hey, 
technician. Vote no to the behavior control technician. Vote yes for freedom. Vote yes for freedom of speech. Vote yes for, for, for no censorship. Vote yes for legalization of marijuana. Vote no to the behavior control technician. Vote no.
Space than the outer space that I'm already in. And I would like to stay in the atmosphere to make it all clear for all of y'all. Yeah, you know, it's sort of like. I'm hook that motherfucker up. It ain't hooked up yet. Somebody get that shit hooked up. It's sort of like, it's sort of like yeah. having a real big pillow over your stereo system at home and you can't hear shit. Yeah, what's the words to that song though? Oh, Snowden? Oh, yeah. Yo, well, let's kick that shit real quick. Listen to the words of this song. One, two, three, go. When you ain't got shit, make you wanna lose shit. When you're fucking fed up, you're still gonna shoot shit. Listen to the government, you don't know what to tell you. Listen to a white man, the government's letting us. Riot! Riot! Riot. Yeah, we burned your fucking store up. And at this point, you know we don't give a fuck. What the hell you expect anyway? Shit's got some crazy. They're gonna get crazy. Look at your shit. Slow down. Look at your shit. Slow down. Riot! Riot! Can't we all just get along? Riot! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
bartender. Let's have another right, bartender. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
That's right, you might get fucked at the end of the night. It's very distracting to the performance to have your penis touched by audience members. <laughs> but you can touch our nuts. Please come and touch my nuts.
The name of this poem is called You're My Favorite Nigger. It's about racism. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Believe it or not, racism is still around. It has just uh, transformed itself into the corporate upper class world as opposed to being on a cotton field and picking cotton. It is now in the major record companies and major industries, racism is. On a rock in the middle of the sea with marine life, shark bites and surfers all around me. I was away from the mainland, they call it, but as usual, the cracker put the piece to the dome of the Hawaiian and stole it blood cold. So before I get any deeper into the matter, let me take you to the stratus of fear, the fear of the matter, my dear. I went to Honolulu, the tropics of Honolulu, in the rock in the middle of the sea, that's cool. It was parties and drinks and nature overflowing, and the best of mutual kind that makes for a good spray flowing. Technicolor fish in the coral reef, and the last thing on my mind was a redneck in the vicinity. I was coming home from the Munchie restaurant, drunk and full of pancakes and ready to hit the bunk. Where my residing pot, my residing spot, dwelling pace right down the street. Well, let me bypass my luxury speech and get right to the point. On my way back to my flat, my place. Believe it or not, I came face to face with a big corn fed white redneck motherfucker and his two rebel flag wearing t shirt good old boys, Charles Manson Custer and Dude Bra Hang Noose. First, they passed me on the way to the club on a dark street with the high trees and the vibe was thick like mud. Right when I thought I didn't have to say nothing to none of them, Mighty Corn Whitey turned around with his face aglow with a grin and said, Hey, you're in that band Fishbone, ain't you? You're my favorite nigger in the world. Nice to meet you. I was really scared as he put his big heavy WWF wrestling arm around my shoulder. I was scared like a bitch. On myself, I thought I'd almost shit, but I said to myself, gotta be cool, don't trip. I felt like Bugs Bunny with Yosemite Sam to weigh 300 pounds in a 1920s Warner Brother not too far from a Ku Klux Klan cartoon. After the word nigger blared loud and echoed in my head, I knew I had to say something. I couldn't let him think I was scared. Hey, I really love you guys, your band Fishbone, you guys are grand. I've been listening to y'all for a long time now. You're my favorite nigger in the world. Wow. Well, thanks, I replied. Nice to meet you, too. And what's your friend's name and the other one, too? They told me their names, but it was all in slow motion. I didn't hear a word they said. I just knew I had to distract them. Sure enough, it was Dude Bra Custer and Manson Hang Loose, let loose from the snuff house in Hawaii on the loose. Hurry, think quick, think fast, or it's going to be your black ass. So I noticed this big green N on Corn Fed's T-shirt. Well, thanks, I replied. Nice to meet you, too. So that N on your shirt, it means nigger too, right? No, it means nine inch nails, he said. Yeah, right. You know it means nigger, see? That's why you got that N on your shirt and you're talking to me. Lucky for me, the joke flew over their head. They were ignorant, stupid, and corn fed. Worse than Tom Metzger at a hip hop show. More ridiculous than George Bush at a low rider stroll. If my jovial joke disposal would have been found out, I would have been six feet deep or hanging from a tree dead without a doubt. So where you going, I replied. Down the club, down the street to the club. Meanwhile, as this cracker triangle surrounded me, trying to figure out my Bugs Bunny-like logic, I was thinking fast, and at last I found a way to dodge it. So you're going to that club down the street, right? Man, it's fly. Uh, uh, I mean rockin' dude tight. Light bulbs suddenly flashed over their heads of meat as I continued with my plan of distraction, which was working with much effectiveness. Yeah, that's right. Down the street and around the corner. It's a lot of fine white girls, too. Pussy and drinks and treats. A market of meat and a stripper's retreat. So, distracted from the bigot bullshittery that was naturally in their minds. And about face, they made a way from me. And toward the club, they did stride. And with pussy on their minds and racism in their blood, they smiled and waved goodbye to me with confidence and said, I really love your band and your music is fun. So see you later, nigger. And remember, you're my favorite one. As for the fart I was saving, I blew it in their direction. And the way the wind was blowing, I knew it would catch them. 
as for their ignorant dumbasses, I'll pray for them some. In hopes that one day, their stupid, backwoods, dry, pasty country, pea brain, caveman, clan asses will finally see the sun. Amen. And the moral to the story is, don't let your parent, don't let your parents teach you how to be ignorant by calling that person over there a nigga, or calling that person a chink, or calling that person a cracker, or calling that person a wop. Just call them human beings. Ooh, 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 ooh. 